You do not need anyone's permission to make a report. And if something doesn't feel right, speaking up is the right thing to do, even if you're not sure if it is abuse. If we don't report abuse, the abuse can continue, and other people can be put at risk too. The next type of abuse we're going to talk about is verbal abuse. Verbal abuse can be tough to describe. It happens when a caregiver threatens you or tries to hurt you or control you by making you feel bad. It could be someone yelling at you and calling you names and making you feel bad about yourself. It could be someone threatening to hurt you or saying they will take things away like food, clothes, or things you need unless you do what they want. In this next video, we are going to meet Mary. She lives in an apartment with a roommate. Mary has a seizure disorder, so she has a personal care attendant who comes to her apartment to help her with a couple of things, such as organizing her medication and bathing. When you watch Mary's story, pay attention. See if you can find any of the warning signs of verbal abuse. When someone is verbally abused, you might see changes in their behavior. They might seem upset or confused. Maybe they cry more often or become very quiet. They might stay away from certain people or events they used to like. Sometimes they gain or lose weight. See if you notice any of these warning signs and changes in Mary's behavior. A title, Verbal Abuse, Mary's Story. A personal care assistant steps out of her car and walks up to a house. A young woman opens the door. Hi, Cal, come in. Hi, Mary, how you doing? Hi, I'm good. I'm glad you're here to help me. I want to take my bath early so I can get ready for tonight's self-advocates meeting. Sure, whatever. That's fine. Okay, so I'm going to get all my stuff together now. Good idea. We don't need a repeat of yesterday, and I need to be out of here on time. I got things to do today, so no delays today. Okay, Mary? Uh, okay, I I'll let you know when I, when I get started. In the living room, Carol turns on the TV. I'll be waiting. So the lucky winners of this past week... Wearing a robe, Mary brings towels and toiletries into the bathroom. She carefully arranges a net bathing scrubber and a soap dish on a countertop next to the towels. Mary returns to the living room. Sunny skies today with brisk easterly okay, winds. Okay, I'm ready now. Do you degrees. have everything? Clear tonight with a low yep, I'm 30. all set. Tomorrow, Are you sure? And slightly warmer yes, I have everything. I, I checked, I have everything. Well, I hope you're right. You forgot your shampoo yesterday and I had to stop everything and find it for you. I'm sure I have everything. I don't want to waste my time again like that. In the bathroom, Carol inspects the toiletries. Okay, where's the skin lotion? I don't see it. It's right there. I'm so tired of this. Every time. Carol searches a drawer. This is ridiculous. Can't you do anything right? What's wrong with you? I told you, I do not want to be wasting my time. What is wrong with you? Are you completely useless? Or just plain stupid? Now, I'm going to have to go get it. And don't you dare move until I get back. And don't you even think about getting into that tub. Or I promise you, you will regret it. As Carol storms away, Mary sobs. <laughs> Nighttime. In her bedroom, Mary tosses and turns. I know. I'm not stupid. <laughs> daytime. Mary wakes up and slowly sits up in bed. Sighing, she brushes a lock of hair back from her face. Her eyes closed, Mary pushes back the covers, slouches on the edge of the bed, and buries her face in her hands. In the kitchen, Mary's roommate sits at the counter, drinking orange juice. Mary enters, her hair disheveled. She fetches a bowl from the cabinet. Hey, Mary. Mary takes a spoon from a drawer and sits down. Are you okay? No, you look so good. You didn't go to a meeting last night. Yeah. I heard you talking in your sleep. 
I heard you crying, Mary. You look awful. Are you sick? No, it's Cal. She's so mean to me. I can't stop thinking about it. She called me stupid. I only need her here in case if I have a seizure. Just because she helps me, it's not okay for her to be mean to me. What happened? She came to help me with my bath. And I forgot my skin cream. So she started yelling at me and telling me uh, that I never do anything right. She was so mean to me. She scared me. I didn't want to go to my meeting last night. I don't even want to go to work today. She cannot do that. Not now, okay? I'm sick of it. I don't want her coming to the house anymore. Nobody has the right to treat you that way. That's abuse. No. She didn't hit me. She just said mean things to me. It's not abuse. Abuse can't be words, too. It's not okay for someone who helps us to yell or swear or call us names. So what can I do? I don't want her to come here anymore. We need to get you help. You can fire her. Then you have to report it so she doesn't do that again. Fade to black. Kristen McCosh. That was a tough story to watch. Carol was a cruel person. Her words hurt Mary. Verbal abuse is more than just yelling. It's someone using words to hurt you or scare you or threaten you. Did you notice some of the warning signs of verbal abuse with Mary? After Carol yelled at her and threatened her, Mary was too upset to go to her self-advocates meeting. She couldn't sleep. She tossed and turned during the night. And in the morning, she didn't brush her hair. All of these changes in Mary's behavior were warning signs of abuse. Mary's roommate, Cindy, noticed something was wrong. She didn't ignore it. Cindy was a trusted person to Mary. And Cindy gave us a very good example of how to listen and how to report abuse if it happens. Let's talk about how Cindy responded when she found out Mary was being abused. Cindy noticed a change in Mary. Cindy asked Mary what was wrong. When Mary told her about the abuse, Cindy stayed calm. She was a careful listener. She supported Mary and believed her. She did not ask lots of questions. She told Mary that what Carol was doing was abuse. And she told Mary how to report the abuse to Adult Protective Services. She also stayed with Mary while she made the report to support Mary. If you want to respond effectively to abuse like Cindy, it's important to stay calm, listen, don't investigate or ask a lot of questions. Get help by telling a trusted person, a mandated reporter, calling Adult Protective Services, or your local police or 911. And stay with the person so the person is safe. The last type of abuse we're going to talk about today is financial abuse. Financial abuse happens when someone takes or uses your money or belongings without your permission. Financial abuse is stealing. If someone took your credit card and bought something for themselves without your permission, if someone took your clothes or jewelry or social security checks, these are examples of financial abuse. In this last video, we are going to meet David. David has a disability. He lives with three housemates and has staff that help him 24 hours a day. When you're watching David's story, pay attention for warning signs of financial abuse. Here are some examples. When money or belongings disappear. When someone always has to pay for others when they go out to dinner. When a rep payee doesn't provide money or things a person needs. When receipts are not kept correctly or are always missing. Let's take a look at David's story. A title, Financial Abuse, David's Story. In a residential home, the house manager slides money into an envelope marked, David, clothes shopping, $250. A staff member comes in. Hey, Amanda. Hey, Gina. You ready to head out with David? Oh, yeah. David says he mostly needs work clothes, some nice jeans or pants, maybe a couple of button-down shirts, and his cousin's wedding is next month. So if you come across a nice jacket and dress pants, feel free to pick those up. Okay. You know his sizes, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Amanda takes the envelope. Oh, and um, can you save the receipts for me? Leave them in here in the envelope? Sure, that'd be great. Okay. Thanks. 
David, you ready to head out with Amanda? A young man grabs his jacket. Okay, Gina, see you later. You guys have fun. David and Amanda leave the house. David pulls the hood of his jacket up over his head as he walks down the front steps. Amanda follows. She's a middle-aged woman with short, curly hair. Later, they step out of a car and enter a shop. The sign reads, Frugal's Consignment Store. They walk down a flight of stairs and browse through the racks of used clothing. Amanda holds up a beige sweater. Hey, David. What do you think about this one? Okay. Yeah? Yeah. At the cashier. Okay, your total is $44.95, please. Amanda takes money from the envelope. Out of 50? The cashier gives Amanda change and a receipt. Okay, your change is five oh five. Thank you. Thank you. And have a nice day. You too. Amanda and David return to his residence. Oh, back, finally. Hey, why don't you uh, have a seat and I'll put this away. David sits down in the living room and watches TV as Amanda carries the shopping bag into his bedroom. Amanda sits down on the edge of the bed and opens a dresser drawer. She removes the price tag from the beige sweater and puts it in the drawer. A nine-year-old metro girl. She tears off the price tag from a rust-colored sweater. In the living room, David drops the remote control. Accident victim in a four-hour operation. With a glance toward the door, Amanda hurriedly stuffs a pair of jeans into the dresser and closes the drawer. She scoops up the price tags and puts them into the pocket of her trousers. Carrying the empty shopping bag, she saunters out of the bedroom. Now, in a shopping mall parking lot, Amanda walks to her car. Carrying a new shopping bag, she climbs into the driver's seat. She reaches for her cell phone. Hi, Joey. Class out already? Yeah, be there in about 10 minutes. Hey, just left uh, Styleplex, and I got your great outfit for your job interview next week. You are going to look really, really good. I got you some other stuff, too, but uh, I'll talk to you about that when I get home. Okay. Okay. The receipt shows a total of $240 and $1430 in change. Amanda counts out the change. She puts the bills in an envelope. She counts coins from her change purse and puts them in the envelope, then adds the new receipt. With a grin, she closes the envelope and lays it down on the seat next to the shopping bag. It's David's envelope. Now at the group home, David reads a book in his room. Gina comes in. Good morning, David. How are you? Have you thought about what you'd like to wear today? Okay. What about one of your new outfits? Let's see what we've got in here. She takes a sweater from the drawer. Oh, this one looks nice. What do you think? Oh, there's a stain on it. We'll have to take it back. That happens sometimes. She takes out the beige sweater. Here's another nice one. Okay. How about a pair of jeans? Gina spots a price tag. Frugal consignments? What is this? She looks at more clothes. Another one. David, are these the clothes you and Amanda bought yesterday? Yeah. I think we might have to make a phone call. We might have a problem here. Do you mind if we pick out your outfit later after we make the phone call? Okay. In an office, a supervisor answers his phone. Hi, it's Mike. Hi, Mike. Gina Curran. You got a minute? Yeah, hi, Gina. Sure, what's up? I think we might have a problem. Yeah, go ahead. Amanda took David clothes shopping and submitted receipts from a store in the mall. When we were picking out his outfit this morning, we found stains on his shirt and then tags from a consignment store on the other clothes. 